We're going to start with uh, tail calls, which uh, I think it's really uh, easier to understand these if you go through some examples rather than talking about what, what they mean in terms of stack frames. and um, That's all very hard to visualize, but um, if you take a look at um, fold right and fold left, uh, which fold right is not tail recursive, fold left is. Um, and if we look at uh, how they behave on some examples, we can get a sense for uh, what, what tail recursion really, really means. Um, now visually, we sort, of, we sort of identify fold left as the tail recursive one because it has this uh, aspect at the, at the uh, on one of the uh, control flow paths where it goes through uh, uh, this particular match case, the last thing it does is calls itself or calls this particular function. And so this position here is the tail position, which allows for a tail call. Um, so here, you know, fold left calls fold left, and then a few arguments. Um, meanwhile, fold right calls another function that involves fold right and it has to evaluate this first. So the way what that looks like um, is uh, we're going to look at fold right and fold left um, on nums using the, the plus operator. So if we start with uh, fold right of plus uh, zero is the base case, and then nums, I'm going to write them out. One, uh, two, three, four. Um, well, we see what this evaluates to. We match on x's, uh, do this split, we get f of x, f being plus here. So we get plus of x is the head here, one, and then this here, fold right of f, which is still plus, u, which is still 0, and the rest, which is the rest of the tail of the list, 2, 3, 4. So what we're starting to see here is that we, we're building up these deferred um, function calls. Because before we can uh, uh, evaluate this plus on the outside, we have to evaluate another fold right. So what this ends up being as we further go through the evaluation is plus one of we evaluate this fold right. And so that's going to be, you know, we're again getting to this case, f is plus. x is now 2, the new head of the list. And then this, the recursive call, fold right, um, plus 0, and the rest, which is now just 3 and 4. Oh, I'm going to close these parentheses. So going, going down the line until we, we get to the end, it eventually looks like plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, uh, and then we eventually get to the base case of we have plus 4 and then 0 and close all of these off. Um, and finally, we get something that we can evaluate. Um, and it's, the reason we call it fold right is because it has to get all the way to the right end of the list. And then it folds these up, and then folds that with this from the right to the left. Uh, so uh, that's, uh, now what we can compare that to, uh, how fold left operates. Um, and it's very similar. It's just this little switch here. Um, 
but we get something completely different looking. Uh, I'll, I'll stop for questions in just a minute. Um, so if we do fold left with the same arguments of plus 0 as the base case, 1, 2, 3, 4, um, we match on, on our list. We get to x and the rest. And we get a call to fold left again um, of plus. We're just passing this function argument down again. And then f of x and u. So uh, that's a plus of uh, the head 1 and our base case 0. Um, and then the rest of the list, 2, 3, 4. Um, and now we're able to evaluate this um, immediately rather than having to defer it. Um, so this is just you know, 1. Uh, doesn't look like a 1. And uh, so it, it's, it's essentially a call to, uh, so that becomes a call to fold left of plus 1 and then this list. So fold left doesn't expand in this way. It doesn't have to defer anything um, because, it's a, uh, because of this ability to do a, a, a tail call. Um, it's an iterative procedure rather than uh, what you'd call a fold right is what's called linear recursive, um, which is to say it sort of grows. You can see it grows linearly in space as you go through the evaluation process um, because it has to defer these evaluations. Meanwhile, fold left, uh, you know, we, if we keep going, um, you know. This, uh, you know, here we are, we're adding uh, the new base case of 1 to the head 2, 2, 1, and then the rest of the list. So as we continue on with uh, fold left, it, it doesn't um, build up this stack because it doesn't have any excess. Uh, information to, to keep track of. Uh, everything is contained in um, the function arguments. Uh, and if uh, some, I'm going to just stop and see if there's any, any questions um, either on the chat or um, anyone attending. Um, the uh, if anyone has any questions about how this works or this difference, um, all right then. Um, and uh, specifically, the the tail call optimization, and this is just to get into a, a little bit the discussion of of the stack frames that comes into play here. Um, if we were working with a language that didn't have tail call optimizations, um, then even if we had uh, this fold left, which has a tail call, so it should be optimized to um, not need all this extra stack space, um, you'd be a compiler that didn't have the tail call optimization would uh, essentially have something that looked more like you know, you'd end up with a sort of return of, you know, return, et cetera, um, of whatever you got at the end, um, which, you know, it eventually adds up to, to 10. Um, so, uh, but because we don't, we uh, were able to optimize the, the tail call, we can ignore these uh, 
imaginary return statements and uh, just return 10. So we essentially, uh, when we get to this call to fold left, um, you know, rather than evaluate it and then bring it back to here and then return it, um, we just replace our st current stack frame, the place we are in, in evaluation, with this new call.